I thought I'd make a video talking about some of the basics of cabinet making. I'll talk about some of the tools I use. And I'm going to focus on the storage bed that I'm building right now because that's what I'm working on right now. And also with the idea that if you're going to build this project, hopefully you'll find this video helpful during your build. So the first thing I like to do is make a full-size drawing, especially working with a big project like this. The full-size drawing helps you figure things out spatially, like the width and the height of the drawers, how high the bed is going to be. All those decisions can get made before you cut any wood. Once you have the drawing, then you can make a parts list or a cut list, and then you can start to get your material. And since most cabinets are made out of plywood, it's really important to figure out how to break down the plywood. And what I like to do is draw a scale diagram. So I'm gonna bring the camera over and I'll explain how I broke down the plywood for this project. This drawing represents a four by eight sheet of plywood and I've marked out the parts I can get from one sheet. It's going to take a total of four sheets for both cabinets. The first cut is a 30 and a quarter inch rip, but I'm not going to cut it at 30 and a quarter. I'm going to rip it a little heavy and that way I can clean up the factory edge. And if I don't get a really nice cut on the first pass, I have an opportunity to make a second pass and cut a little more off when the plywood is a little smaller and easier to handle. The next cut is for the sides. And again, I'm gonna cut this a little heavy and I'll cut it to its finished width when I cut the cabinet dividers. And then it's the rip for the drawer dividers and you can cut that a little heavier than 10 and a half and that way you've got an opportunity if you need to make a cleaner cut. For the cross cut, I'll use the compound miter saw and then I'll use the cross cut sled and the table saw and set up a stop block and cut all the dividers to the same length. So I just wanted to point out some of the things on this project. One thing I'll tell you is putting a full sheet of plywood or MDF on your work table is a great idea when you're building big projects like this because it makes it possible for you to move them around by yourself. It's just amazing how much I've moved this cabinet since I've been building it. So what I wanted to talk about were our R, I guess, the drawer dividers and how the drawer dividers accommodate, should I say drawer dividers? I mean cabinet dividers, I think. Cabinet dividers accommodate the back of the cabinet. So this divider is only 30 inches long. The sides of the cabinet are 30 and a quarter inches long, and that's to allow for a quarter inch back. That's something you always have to keep in mind when you're building a cabinet is to accommodate a quarter inch or a half inch back. Some of the tools and supplies that you'll need for building cabinets, aside from the major shop tools like the table saw and things like that, are wood glue. Basically every joint in building cabinets is a butt joint and it's reinforced with wood glue. The nailer that I use is an 18 gauge nailer and for the most part I'm using inch and a quarter nails and I'm using inch and a half nails. So I'll point out that these pieces of molding, I don't know if you can see them, there's pieces of molding in the drawer here. Right now the cabinet's upside down and they're there to keep the drawer from tipping forward when it's pulled out of the cabinet. So that's where you want to use an inch and a quarter nail because if you were to use an inch and a half nail, you could go through the top or bottom of the cabinet. So those, you always want to make sure that you're not using a nail that's too long. A pre-drill and countersink drill bit is a great tool and I use, I use them all the time. And for the most part, I use either a number six or a number eight. And Rockler was kind enough to send me a few of these bandy clamps. And this is one of those tools that I really didn't realize that I needed until I got it in the shop here. And it was really convenient to use uh, when I was attaching the face frame to the front of the cabinet. The last thing I want to talk about are the cabinet dividers. Now obviously you don't need to double up three quarter inch plywood for cabinet dividers. That's just something I wanted to do for this project. And the way I did that was I cut the material to the same length and width and to laminate it together I just made sure that the edges were flush, tacked it in place with inch and a quarter nails and then weighted it down. Now that's a little bit different for the sides of the cabinet because the sides of the cabinet are a quarter inch longer than the dividers. So I just made sure that the top, bottom, and front were flush, and then that made for the quarter inch reveal in the back to accept the back of the cabinet. One more thing I wanted to talk about is 
Whenever I'm building furniture that are cabinets that I know are going to be painted, I generally will use poplar. Poplar is a tight grained wood and it's really good for painting and it's, it's really nice and easy to work with because it has virtually no knots. And if you ever go for a walk in the forest and, and look at a poplar tree, we happen to have a lot of poplar trees here in New Jersey. If you look up the tree, you'll just see a big long trunk because poplar trees drop their branches as they rise and look for light. So if you look at, at poplar wood, you'll just see nice long boards with very few imperfections and knots. So it's just easy to work with. And it's fairly inexpensive. And for the most part, I use material that's described as S4S. And that means it's surfaced on four sides. And so you don't, you don't have to do very much milling to it. I mean, obviously I had to cut these down to an inch and a half, but you don't really need a joiner. And it's, uh, it just makes it a little bit easier if you don't have all that equipment. So I wanna give a quick shout out to my sponsors for this project. Garnica Plywood is a sponsor of the show and they just make a really nice product. And I'll put a link to a list of distributors of where you can get their plywood. Sometimes you just gotta ask lumber yards for it because they are sort of getting into more places, but it's a, it's a really nice product and it's a pleasure to work with. And then Bedmasters is supplying the mattress for this project and they are, uh, I actually know James, the owner of the company, he's a really nice guy, and it's an American company. It's been in the same location in Florida for over 20 years, and so definitely check them out if you're in the market for a mattress. So I'll see you as soon as this project is done, and thanks for tuning in. So if you want to see what a really big poplar tree looks like, stick around, I'll take you on a, a little field trip to Huber Woods. This is a place where I go hiking maybe two times a week, and they've got a, a, lot of, a lot of trees there, but they've got a few really big poplar trees, and I'll point a few out. Here's a pretty small poplar. Poplar. I meant to say poplar. Anyway, you can see it's not that big. It's probably pretty young. Poplar trees grow really fast. So here's a nice straight poplar tree and you can recognize them because they have kind of this tan brown color and a very tight bark but just take a look at how straight and tall that tree is so that's what a poplar tree looks like in this part of New Jersey have a great day